Rookie Era. A very warm welcome to the ESRC Festival of Social Sciences Coventry Create session. Um, and so we have a number of panel members here and we're, we're really excited and looking forward to sharing with you um, some more information um, and uh, our experiences of working on this uh, this very exciting project. Um, I just want to mention to you a little bit of housekeeping at the beginning, just this session is being recorded um, so that you're aware of that. Um, and there's a little uh, comment section. Um, so please, as we're going along, please do post your questions in there. Um, as, and then we can put those to the various um, panel members. So we're very fortunate today we have um, both artists and researchers who've been involved in the projects of uh, Coventry Creates and several of the panel members as well. Um, and just um, in case you're not aware, Coventry Creates was a, a fantastic project where uh, the two universities, um, Coventry University and the University of Warwick, were involved in commissioning artists to respond to or to work with um, researchers in the two universities. And the results um, of those collaborations you can see on the Coventry Creates website, um, which is a, a really exciting digital exhibition uh, that's there available um, for you to have a look at. Um, and we'll perhaps pop that up on, on the screen um, in, a, in a moment during this um, panel session. So just to begin with, I thought it would be nice just to introduce you to the panel members so you know who's going to be talking. And um, perhaps we can start with um, you, Kerry. Could you say a little bit about where you're from um, and how you've got involved um, in the Coventry Creates project? Yeah, sure. So I'm Kerry Wikes. I'm a registered nurse by background. I worked in the emergency department for many years. I'm now a lecturer in emergency care for Coventry University. And I was involved in the Humans um, Not Heroes research project, which um, was uh, collaborating with Nick Walker, the writer and director, to create a piece of audio artwork from healthcare professionals' um, experiences of working through COVID-19. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And Nick, would you like to say something about your involvement and introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm Nick and I'm a writer which uh, who works across a, a range of forms, in, including audio work. Um, but quite a lot of the stuff that I've done has involved the use of personal testimony, which is how I came to the project through China Plate Theatre. Um, and as Kerry said, um, our project was about gathering testimony from frontline NHS workers, uh, which is where the audio piece came from. Okay, lovely. Thank you. And Reem, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Reem Dukmak, and I am an early career fellow at Warwick University. I also work in the Coventry Refugee and Migrant Centre as integration team leader. Um, I'm quite excited to be on the panel today to share our latest project uh, of Free Integrate. Um, yeah, and I look forward to um, hearing more questions like about the project and, and um, more from the audience. Brilliant. Thanks, Reem. Thanks. Paul, would you like to introduce yourself next? Sure. Uh, so I'm Paul O'Donnell. I'm an artist mainly working solo in theatre. Um, but this was a collaborative project which, in which I worked with Reem um, to collaborate with four refugees that are asylum seekers based here in Coventry to tell their story of reintegration from where they were born to Coventry, where they are now. Um, and it was a really fantastic experience between myself and Reem and these four participants. Great, thank you. And as we as we go through the uh, the, the different questions that we'll be uh, looking at through the course of this session, we'll hear a little bit more about those um, different projects in detail. Um, Peter, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, my name's Peter Murphy. I'm the Associate Dean for Enterprise and Innovation in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities at Coventry University. So I sit on the Monitoring and Evaluation Board for uh, City of Culture. So it's a, a contract, a partnership contract between University of Warwick and Coventry University. Um, and it's us who came up with this idea. And it really was a direct response to the COVID pandemic. We could see uh, what was happening in the creative industries. And also a lot of our research projects, if you think we've got 30 live research projects at the moment, couldn't do that public engagement. And we really felt that working, pairing uh, researchers with artists would be part of this solution. So we obviously knew um, the problem was much wider than Coventry Creates could solve, but 
but just thought platforming artists, showing a digital showcase and really working through that process with researchers would be beneficial. And I have to say, I'm probably the proudest I've ever been of this project since I've started at Coventry University. It's excellent. Thanks, Peter. And Doreen, over to you. I'm Doreen Foster, I'm Director of Warwick Arts Centre, and I was on the selection panel. So I had the, the joy of um, looking at all the applications and um, helping to make hopefully some great decisions. I think we did. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and as usual, I do apologise. I completely forgot, of course, to introduce myself. Um, so my name is Jackie Hodgson. Um, I'm at the University of Warwick. I'm a professor in the law school and I'm also a deputy pro vice chancellor for research. Um, and so I also sit on the uh, kind of collaborative working group along with Peter and other colleagues from both our two universities. And so this project has also very much been, been my baby and my thing that we've worked on um, with Peter and with other colleagues across both universities. And it's been it's been a really new thing I think for all of us it's been very exciting we had to do it very quickly on the fly come up with some some innovative ideas and solutions and we were overwhelmed with the the response I think of just you know particularly from the artists but you know great research as well but you know just the quality of the artists that we engage with two of whom we're, we're very fortunate to have with us um here today um, so we are we're very excited and can i really implore you if you haven't already to go and have a little look james could we pop the uh, could we pop the website up just to show people who are watching uh, so they can just see um it's very easy to navigate around you can scroll through and you'll see all the different projects there are 18 projects there um, and as you go down and if we perhaps i think reintegrate you can see there on the right um, and then if you kind of keep going down um, boats on the ocean um, is a little further. I think it's on the last line, in fact. Yeah, there. And so as you click on each one, um, maybe click on boats on the ocean. We, people can just see how super easy it is to navigate your way around. And then you have some information um, about the researchers, about the artists. Um, and then you have um, here, then there, you can see there's the recording here. Um, that um, is the, the output for this project. Some, some of them are audio recordings, some of them are films. Um, you'll also see some um, photo photographic work. It's a whole range of different uh, creative outputs. Fabulous. So we thought we've got a, a couple of sort of sections for the panel, but we'll see how things go. And if there are um, questions that come up in the comments, which we really hope there will be, please, please do ask questions. Um, otherwise, who knows what we'll end up talking about. We're in your hands to some extent here. Um, and so we can put those to the uh, to our trusted panel members. So the, the first thing that we thought would be good to try and address here is to, to talk a little bit about how the artist and researcher collaborations worked um, within Coventry Creates. So I think that's something really to, um, for, for Kerry and Nick, who worked together on Boats on the Ocean, and for Reem and Paul, who worked on um, Reintegrate. Um, so Kerry and Nick, would you, perhaps you could talk a little bit about your experience of working together on this project? Sure. So first of all, I'd like to mention that actually um, there were a number of artists involved in the creation of Boats on an Ocean. So we had um, the first artists involved were China Plate Theatre, who are a local theatre company. Um, and I'd actually collaborated with Andrea, who's one of the producers for China Plate, in um, creating some forum theatre projects um, for our emergency department nurses back in London around 10 years ago probably, um, when she was still a student at Central School of Speech and Drama. And um, when we both realised we were around the same area and um, in Coventry now, um, I said perhaps we could collaborate again on this project. Um, so she was instrumental really in helping me in the initial phases of the planning. Um, and China Plate then decided to bring Nick on board in um, his expertise as a writer and director. Uh, we also had Charlotte Bickley involved as a sound designer and Barty Patel, um, who you may know from her work on Doctors, who actually um, collaborated on the final recording. So um, I really think it just needs to um, be aware of how many people are actually involved in, the, in creating this incredible um, piece of audio artwork that we finally came up with, which is really a testament to um, the experiences of the healthcare workers who were involved in the workshop. 
And so, Nick, perhaps you could say something because it's um, for uh, as academics, it's very exciting for us, I think, to collaborate um, with with theatre makers, with film producers, with you know all kinds of um, creative people. Um, and I think it helps us to interrogate our research um, in different ways and to understand it in different ways, as well as to reach different audiences. So it'd be interesting to have your perspective on what that was, how you approached working um, with the researchers um, in terms of then finally leading to this fantastic um, creative output. Well, for me, it was about just trying to pick a narrative through the incredibly diverse experiences that, that our healthcare workers have had. And the inspiring and interesting, fascinating thing for me was about how the, the, the two agendas that we all had came together. So I was looking for stories that, was rep that, were, that, that might be representative of a wide range of views whilst at the same time being really engaged with what the uh, what Kerry and her team were trying to get out of this experience from a research perspective. And actually we found that we could both work in our own disciplines and then reflect on what we got from that experience afterwards. And it didn't really interfere with our own, it didn't really interfere with our own disciplines, we didn't get in the way. Um, but what was what was really interesting about it was was the things that I was looking for and the things that Kerry were looking for turned out to be really aligned. You know, we were looking for we were looking for a sort of a true human experience, <laughs> which was both helpful from a creative point of view and helpful from a research point of view. And it seemed to be a little bit about trying to cap capture something true. And that was the thing we were both interested in. And that was really eye opening for me. Could you say something, so for those of you who haven't listened, it's a it's a single narrative, that audio piece, but I know that you worked with a number of individuals and you worked on them uh, to encourage them to engage in some creative writing to then pull together that narrative. So I'm interested, how did that, how did that work? How, because you've made something that feels, it, it just flows beautifully as that single narrative. Um, so it was actually incredibly just one online workshop which um, lasted for around 90 minutes with eight healthcare professionals who were from um, all over the UK. And um, we asked them to explore their experiences through creative um, activities. So creative writing, um, thinking about character embodiment and, and how a, a healthcare worker character might feel in certain situations and thinking a bit more in depth around compassionate um, healthcare workers and compassionate leadership which is um some based on some research that one of our colleague my research colleague sally sally pozzaro has um been involved in working on um and i'll put a link to to her blog in the um in the chat so that uh, james can post that uh and um yeah so we had this one one workshop and it was incredibly emotional incredibly inspirational and humbling the stories that our healthcare worker participants shared and Nick then went away and did an incredible job in um, weaving all of those narratives together um, taking the words of everyone and creating this beautiful script which every single participant read and and said that they cried um, when they read it which was really emotional um, and then, um, and then Nick was responsible for directing the the final recording with Barty, which obviously there were challenges in in terms of all the social distancing that was going on at the time, um, which is obviously still going on. Um, but um, but it was a really powerful process and really um, really enlightening. Um, but I'd like to, I would really like to hear more from Paul and Reem, in fact, about um, their co-creation um, process, because we would have loved to have had our participants more involved in the final creation of the audio art piece. Um, they all reviewed the script, but they weren't involved in the recording of it. Um, and I'd, I'm just really fascinated around how Paul and Reem managed to conduct that so successfully, given the time limits that we had. So I'm looking forward to hearing from them. <laughs> 
And I should perhaps also say that whilst so Paul and Reem are a little bit unusual in that very much a co-creation through their project, um, but just to explain the process a little bit, that when we invited applications, we invited individual researchers and artists um, to apply to us, and then we selected out what we thought were the strongest projects, and then we had a process of matching. Um, so it wasn't that, that Nick and Kerry kind of rocked up together as a, as a ready-made project, and some, so there were some, some people were surprised, I think perhaps by some of the matches, but for all 18 projects, we had really good feedback, um, and I think people found it in, incredibly um, productive. Um, and really kind of satisfying. I wonder, Peter, maybe you just want to say a little bit there because you were involved in that matching project, weren't you? You were really, because uh, we, we had to select researchers, select artists, do the matching and then find, do the sort of final stuff. Would you like to say something about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think why I had such a substantive role in this is I'd worked for Arts Council England for 10 years. So I'd just come on to Conment, to Coventry University. So I really knew the cultural sector and the creative industries and what was feasible and what was possible. But what surprised me was how many artists I didn't know. So this revealed some really interesting emerging artists. So artists that had just come into their practice. And also when we through the matching process, they really had to work together to work out how to work together, if you see what I mean. So I knew um, Paul O'Donnell uh, because of the festival that he programs, but actually seeing the way that he worked with Ream in a totally different format with a digital output was fascinating. Um, so it was, I mean, Doreen was involved in the, in the matching process as well. So when you see names on spreadsheets and a bit of a profile, you don't really know how it's going to work. And we asked the researchers what kind of art form they thought they might work with. But at the end of the day, we had to match some artists with researchers that just had no idea how they would work together. And some of those partnerships were truly magical. Some really, really interesting work has come out. And Doreen, would, would you like to say something? Because you were also involved in the selection panel, so you were also involved in scrutinising this. We had a, a fabulously long list of artists. It was, it was quite sad that we had to pick a relatively small number out of such a strong field. Yeah, I think that the process, I mean, it was really interesting, actually, and the, I guess the final projects are the most fascinating piece in the process, I think, because, you know, when you match in to the artists or companies who haven't worked together to create something, especially over such a short period of time, I'm, I'm really curious in, in, I guess, knowing more, a little bit, little bit more about your processes and the extent to which you maybe had to put things aside in order to arrive at. Uh, you know the common narratives because because it is quite unusual to be doing something like this and I think and some of the research topics I think were well, well, certainly for me um, you know not straightforward topics you know quite um, uh, challenging and uh, complex themes that were being explored so so I guess that's the other thing in terms of how you you know how the research is I guess simplified it sufficiently in order you know, to, I guess, allow the, the artist to, to find a way in if that was necessary. I mean, maybe there were just complex themes for me, but <laughs> so I think there's something about, about that. Um, because I mean, all, I think all the, the, the projects are just so beautiful and, and you do feel as though there, you know, there was a relationship that, that you chose each other rather than being put together. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, Kerry, you wanted to come in? No, I just wanted to respond to that really and say that um, I think one thing that we've decided on in future is we'll be we'll be less worried around the kind of um, the research output um, and because there were some s s sort of minor concerns in the planning process that um, if we kind of allowed too much sort of drama and theatre and um, and storytelling that we wouldn't actually um, be able to explore participants' real experiences. Um, there was a sort of slight concern from me there. Um, but having gone through the process, uh, the most powerful points were the points where participants were able to be really um, creative and use metaphor and, um, you know, it really sort of helped them to express their experiences in that way. Um, so that's one thing I learned from the process is not to be not to be too too concerned about that. It's part of the artistic process and the arts based research process. That kind of um, there's a question here and um, that's been posed by Edmund Collier um, for Nick and Kerry saying what was this maybe maybe quite an, uh, an impossible one to uh, answer. What was more important for you, the participants, the process of talking about their experience, or the final piece that was made? <laughs> 
Um, Nick, do you want to answer that first? <laughs> well, the, there are a range of things going on. In the moment, it felt like the, the, what we were experiencing in that online room, if you like, was the chance for people to talk about things that they there wasn't much space in their lives to talk about with people who would absolutely understand. Um, and so, yeah, the, 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 that blurry line between uh, a kind of group therapy thing and a creative exercise and a kind of cathartic moment felt like it was all really bundled in together, which made it such a complex moment. And it was only afterwards that we were unpicking the narrative significance or the research significance. But in the moment, it felt like we were just all in the room together. And, and I think that was the powerful experience for all the participants. And it was also where we recognized a real need for that. And perhaps the sort of story framework, the creative writing framework that we gave to it, perhaps allowed a sort of slightly distanced freedom for them to be perhaps more honest than they would have been or more open than they would have been if we'd set it up as something different. Um, the fact that, that the agenda was a storytelling agenda or a, or a capturing of experiences at experiences agenda from a writer as well as researchers meant that I think they felt a little bit sort of safer to speak. Um, I think it's worth saying though that um, many of the participants commented on how how important it was, how, how um, they felt that their voices were heard through this process. One of our participants commented um, that these are these are stories worth telling. It made her feel that these were stories worth telling. These were experiences worth being portrayed through the arts, and that ordinarily maybe people wouldn't have um, listened to their kind of testimonies. But um, the way that this um, practice output kind of elevated access to to these stories and these experiences and our findings um, was a really special thing. Thank you. So should we uh, perhaps move on to Reem and Paul? Um, would you like to talk to us a little bit about how your um, collaboration worked? Yes. Uh, Reem, do you want to maybe start with? Yes, yeah. I can start. Um, right, so um, basically like this project builds on my uh, PhD uh, research where I looked at the role of drama in teaching English language to refugees in Turkey and uh, this project came timely really after I passed my viva because it was the time where I really wanted to see how relevant my research be to um, you know or more like hands-on kind of use mm -hmm. um, and then when I saw the call <clears throat> out uh, for Coventry Creates, I thought, okay, I really want to give it a go and see how, you know, I can um, work to support the local community in Coventry. Um, I lived in Coventry now for almost six years. I've been working in um, a charity, uh, been working with refugees in the capacity of, you know, sort of like community participation officer. So I was keen all the time to um, reach out to people like Paul, like uh, Nick, just to, um, you know, find ways that can help um, refugees to settle down, feel welcome, but also connect and build skills. Um, so I was quite excited when I met with Paul um, and I uh, really like uh, met him uh, online. <laughs> um, so the good thing is um, because we have kind of uh, similar interests about you know how to explore um, the topic of uh, integration in a creative way um, and then we work together all through regular meetings again all online um, I, I didn't have uh, the chance to meet Paul until really later uh, when the lockdown was lifted um, kind of yeah sometime in the summer uh, so it was quite um, learning experience for me um, because there was so much um, of the work done online and there were like tools that we had to learn how to use and then to make sure that participants were also finding access to these I mean in terms of wi-fi in terms of equipment um, these were all like things uh, needed to make sure all are available um, and yeah, so uh, the research itself 
um, consist of um, doing interviews with, with the four participants that Paul mentioned, but also with other participants from the local community. I can come to talk more about, you know, <laughs> these uh, different <clears throat> kind of um, approaches. Maybe, uh, Paul, you can, you can also um, highlight on this. Uh, but the idea was really uh, we wanted to explore the integration of people at a time that, you know, there's lockdown. <laughs> there isn't really much they can do to really uh, go out, meet people, and have this sort of experience. Um, so we were able, um, I would say, uh, to create a space where people came along and mm -hmm. felt safe to share their experiences, um, you know, um, in a creative ways. <laughs> um, and that's that's why we you can see like uh, the video which Paul uh, put together, um, thanks like to uh, Paul's skills, but also to many participants who provided all these um, kind of media. And um, one of the challenges that uh, was um, difficult, uh, um, you know, the, the language barrier because uh, some of the participants, for instance, did not speak good English. So I had to step in and do the translation. Again, uh, during um, one and a half hour session, you know, you can imagine how much translation can take of that. Uh, so I had, for instance, to come up with other ways, like translating in the chat box, uh, making sure that people, you know, are following up, um, you know, whether English to Arabic or other, the other way around. Um, so it, it was a lot of, um, you know, improving the work as, as we went. Like I said, it, it was like first time we, we do this online. Um, so, yeah, there, there were like a lot of, um, I'd say, negotiations. So, uh, for instance, we wanted to bring along like other people from the local community. But after the first session, uh, Paul and I thought, oh, we wanted to give people the chance to, um, you know, share their experiences because there was that kind of intensity um, and interest on, on the part of people. Oh, we've got the space. Now we want to talk. Um, so um, maybe, Paul, you can you can elaborate yeah, on that. Can, yeah, I guess I uh, can unpack the process a bit more. Um, so really, we only sort of had four weeks to make magic happen um, with the digital output. Um, as Peter was saying, it's, it's a very fast paced thing um, in the midst of lockdown. Within that, obviously, the four participants that we engage have their own lives, so they can't be <laughs> in uh, a space with us 24 seven. So we, we very much worked with them uh, four Thursdays across that month. Uh, for one and a half hours each week uh, and it was really our gathering space uh, the first week was very much about me getting to know them and them getting to know me and feeling comfortable with one another because they had never met me before Reem was really pivotal in that because she had a relationship with these individuals um, and act acted as that sort of connector between myself and them which was really really useful the, the sort of second and third week was about uh, generating a load of material. So we did a load of uh, exercises and workshops, of course, on Zoom. So it was very much limited to text or conversation. We couldn't really do dance because, or, or anything physical because, uh, well, there was the difficulty of Zoom in and of itself, but also uh, one or two of our participants their Wi-Fi wasn't strong enough to hold a video, so I didn't actually see what that person looked like until we met in a cafe when we came out of lockdown after the process had finished. Um, and then the final week, so in between week three and week four session, I then took away everything that they had said in uh, these workshops, everything they had written, and basically... I didn't make up any lines at all, um, apart from one, which was a connector. Um, but then bashed all of their four pieces of text together to make one cohesive text amongst us that 
they then spoke into three videos and the, the three videos were the home I happened to be born into was the first one. It's very much about where they were born. The second one was our ever-changing world and that was about how uh, their journey to the UK and their expectations and hopes and aspirations of that. And the final uh, video was called A Loving Mother's Hug and that was uh, titled by uh, Sozdar, who said that coming to the UK felt like a loving mother's hug, which I thought was really, really beautiful. Um, and so that became the sort of stimulus for the last video, which was very much about their gratitude for the UK. It was um, it was really surprising to me, uh, who hadn't really built a relationship with the refugee or asylum seeking community before, to find out that there was nothing but gratitude. And so the one line that I did make up, which um, I always find funny this scenario, but um, I, uh, within the group, I uh, there was a line within the text that says, um, and when you're safe, you can achieve anything. And I put a little connector line before that for Aya to say, um, it's n about the UK, it's not perfect, um, no, it's, it's not perfect, but it, it is safe. And when you are safe, you can achieve anything. And I, uh, when I put the text to the group, I uh, said, sorry, Paul, I, I don't agree with that. Um, the UK is perfect. And I was like, oh, I, I was like really surprised by that, that she thought that the UK was perfect. And I had sort of put that word into the mouth, her mouth, I guess, to apologize for the UK assuming that they had faced a load of hardships and really they were just gra grateful to be here and that was sort of a really surprising thing for me which I tried to capture in the, the text that we finally created which became three videos mm -hmm. I guess I think it's an incredibly positive story isn't it I was I was struck by that by, by how positive all of those um, narratives are but particularly that that final one and that was very moving the descriptions of of spring in the UK and that feeling of freedom and all the possibilities all that I will I will um, on the screen and so on and again a little bit like with boats on the ocean it's really interesting the ways in which you've woven together the different narratives and I found it powerful hearing the different voices and the fact that the fact that some Somebody's English wasn't perhaps good enough to do that. It wasn't a barrier. We still heard her voice, and then you had the the translation underneath. Um, I think I think that was yeah. I, well, I, I really enjoyed that. I should perhaps just explain in terms of because um, I kind of forget those of you watching will, will not know the uh, outrageous constraints under which these um, artists and researchers had to work. And um, essentially, the way that we were able to fund this project is we had funded some research which wasn't able to go ahead because of lockdown, and so we thought this would be a really great thing to do that we could help the local creative sector um, and we can do, do something really interesting with research um, but a significant amount of our funds had to be spent by the end of July so uh, we worked very very quickly in April to pull all of this together and then everybody had to get together sort out their ideas and come up with their outputs which all had to be digital because we knew we couldn't have an in-person exhibition. And there's a few questions here in the chat about whether we would like to actually um, post lockdown have this as a physical exhibition and the answer is absolutely yes and we're looking at doing that um, as part of City of Culture the programme. Um, there's something that's planned in the Herbert Gallery I think which will be for all kinds of um, artistic outputs that have been created during um, the Covid pandemic and so we're going to see if we can have, find a slot there to have Coventry creates in there. Also, are we planning to do it again? Yes, we absolutely are. Peter and I are in very active discussions about how we can try to get some funding to do this again. I'm doing a very small uh, evaluation project so we can really learn, you know, what worked well, the things that we could do better um, kind of moving forward. And although this was conceived of in lockdown and it was a, a very agile response to a very particular set of circumstances, I think we've all learned so much. We think this is just a great thing to do anyway. Um, and rather than put words in your mouth, it'd be interesting to hear just very briefly from the artists and from the researchers, the kind of the impact of a project like this, a few people have asked, has it changed the way, you know, has it changed your art practice? Has it changed the way that you approach your research? I don't know if you have anything briefly to, to say about that. Nick? Um, 
Unmute, unmute. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the areas that has been really fascinating for artists has been the use of, um, yeah, personal testimony, real stories, all that sort of stuff. And we do have our own protocols, which is about the use of that material. But what one of the things, and it's a small bit of it, but one of the really important uh, aspects of it was um, just how rigorous and appropriate and well thought through um, the academic research sort of team had about the appropriate use of real stories. Um, I, I've got, it's, you know, generalizing, I think certainly perhaps reflecting back, there's been a, there's been a slightly, not loose use of that kind of material that artists might have done, or taken some liberties with it in a way. And what was, um, uh, what was amazing about this experience was just how, um, how careful um, our, academic, our academic colleagues were with about, you know, the, eth the ethical use of material. And I, I sort of felt on that very sort of specific and small side of it, it felt like, you know, really, we'd really developed in our understanding of that kind of thing. Because um, when you hear a good story, the, 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 the temptation is to just kind of completely run with it and it can kind of a little bit dominate. And, um, uh, and, and in this case, uh, because of all the structures in place, uh, I did feel as if that was a sort of a important bit of development as an artist about how how we use it and to reflect on what that means to use it uh, and what that output is as a, as a consequence. How about you, Paul? Would you do it again? Is this something uh, that you enjoyed as an artist? Would you welcome the opportunity to to work with an academic researcher again? Yes, absolutely, and I think what uh, I, I guess was unique about our project was um i don't know a lot about all of the other projects how they how, what their processes look like but um my understanding is most of the processes uh, the research was already pre-formed and ready to go when the artists then were there to inhabit and take that on board whereas ours was very much we were building the research as the process was developing so Reem was interested in seeing how drama can positively impact refugee and asylum seekers. And so this process was part of that research and development. Um, and so it's sort of echoing what Nick was saying, like I think there's something great in how artists work with research, but there's also something really powerful in research being fueled by art as well. And and as Nick was saying, like I feel like the participants within our group really opened up and um, shared really personal, intimate things uh, about themselves and their experiences that I don't think you would get out of a conversation. And it was because it was perhaps wrapped up in fiction a little bit, or it was um, done in a creative way and uh, developed as a creative in output. One of the most sort of powerful uh, sessions was in week three, um, I gave them like half an hour to go away and write uh, sort of a, a pitch for a film based on their life. And they went away and they all came back with incredibly personal things because it was wrapped up in this sort of fiction of it being a film about uh, Aya or a film about Sozdar. Um, and for me, that was like the most emotional session um, because they really opened up in those moments. Um, and I don't I think, I don't think you can get that in a conversation necessarily. I think that's a really great point. That's something very particular about that co-creation model that you had, that how if we're doing some research as an artist or if we're doing some research as a piece, a piece of academic research, that that's going to perhaps look different and it's going to um, to get a different response compared with mm -hmm you two you know co this co-creation together i can think of other similarities with, um, so for example in criminal justice work um people who are working uh, as in criminal justice academic research um people who are working um with storytellers or with um theater makers mm -hmm. as, as a much more sort of safe and approachable way to encourage people to tell their stories that in an academic interview you really might not want to tell that but it might be easier to tell it through a, through a piece of drama yes. so i think yes. i think that's a really um, Really good example. Yeah, exactly. I I can um, like uh, echo what you said, Jackie. Because when we come to do research, one of the challenges is okay. How do I 
make my research relevant to the people taking part in the process, whether at the end, um, you know, showing them the outcomes of the research or, you know, if there's anything they can take part in themselves. Uh, but with our, with reintegrate, um, what was unique about it, it, it was that uh, the the research the research was kind of translated into real life through art. Um, so it, it was meaningful for the participants, like they could see, okay, this is my participation, oh, this is the output of it. And they had actually kind of, like you said, co-created this output through like the materials they, they shared, uh, the whole experience itself, because some of them, you know, um, they said to me, oh, I don't like to hear my voice on record. Uh, she said, I, I never recorded my voice. I, I don't like to hear my voice. And then at that point, like ethically, I did like respect her decision. And then um, I just like offered her to think again about it and try maybe if, if she wants. And then after a while, she came back with the, rec <laughs> with the recording and uh, she said, yes, I did it. And I felt like this really, this is something I really wanted to try and yeah, with these little things, we were able to um, work on the confidence level of people, like building some skills that can be transferable, whether to, to develop these skills or to, um, you know, um, there, there are lots of potentials, um, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Because what happened was the workshops were part of the research. For me, I was more overwhelmed by the backstory because um, I had interviews with the participants before they started the workshops. So just to um, get insights into their experience settling in Coventry and how you know their integration has been um, coming to the lockdown. Um, and then at the end of the workshops, I also interviewed them. So it was kind of interesting how they developed um, you know, their views of integration um, and, and what they learned next. Yeah, it, it was really like uh, impressive how people within a short time can really build skills. Kerry, did you want to say anything about uh, if it's changed the way you view your research? Uh, well, actually, um, I'm a novice researcher. This was actually my first piece of research. Um, I kind of conceived the idea and then I worked with two very experienced researchers from Coventry, Louise Moody and Sally Pizarro, to um, to plan out the the, um, the research angle. Um, but um, sort of similar in a way to Paul and Reem, um, our, the research was conducted from the transcripts of the participants in the one workshop. So um, we then um, did some qualitative analysis and thematic analysis of those transcripts. Um, but what was really interesting to me was that uh, the themes that came out of Nick's artistic response to that to that workshop and the themes that came out of our thematic analysis were very, very similar. Um, so it's something that we've kind of plotted um, in, our, um, in our research paper. And for me, um, I definitely feel like this was a really powerful way to conduct research. It, it was it respected the participants. There was an aim of actually improving the participants' well-being through this um, research approach. We tried to. Um, we we also had Liz Sparks involved, who is a mindfulness and compassion. Um, practitioner and the course director for the mindfulness and compassionate um, MSC and she um, did some mindfulness with the participants as part of the workshop um, and they so everything was all about sort of trying to make sure that they had a positive experience through taking part in in the research um, so I feel like this is this is the way forward for me really I'm not saying I wouldn't do other types of research but um, but certainly there are lots of plans for continuing this project and doing some similar um, some similar research in the future. Excellent. Excellent. I just wonder if I could ask you, Doreen, just to reflect a little bit, thinking as somebody who's involved in um, programming, you know, in a major arts centre, Warwick Arts Centre, um, and obviously connecting with really important um, social themes. Um, so, I mean, I've been to a number of things there recently. They've really kind of hit home, you know, key, key um, areas of, of really important 
uh, important issues for society. Um, and I just wondered, you know, just reflecting from your position there mm -hmm. and seeing some of the research here and the artistic responses um, from where you're standing, how that how that looks. Well, actually, as um, <clears throat> as Reem was talking, I, I was just thinking about the way, I guess, and I hadn't thought about it in this way, actually, the way it reminds me of, I guess, socially engaged practice. That's essentially what it is, that, that in in making the work, the, the voice of participants was very much privileged. Um, and I guess in terms of what we're wanting to do at Warwick Art Centre is, is to create more space for that, for, um, for making work and presenting work that actually comes from the perspective of, let's say, our audiences and communities um, and and puts their stories and their truths, I suppose, on, on the stage and you know, they're on the screen um, in a less filtered way than, than they might be. So I think um, for me, I'd be quite interested in exploring how, how we can introduce more of this into uh, you know, participatory work to see how we can actually use research as, as a starting point or, or to help to, to better understand uh, some of the, the stories that people are telling. But yeah, so as, as I was just as I say, I was just sitting here thinking, actually, it's it's a it's a way of working that we're we're wanting to do more of. Um, but I hadn't actually thought about it in in this way, um, you know, using using that that strong research base. But I think, and I just uh, just to say that I think in terms of um, what's really interesting for me, looking at the the, the piece of the video that that I looked at was just something about the way in which the so, so most of the most of the, the the content was really about giving people the space to to I guess explore some quite difficult topics actually, but actually and not in any of them do them in do it in a confrontational way. So there was something just really interesting about that approach that you know there is a way that you can you know talk about some really difficult issues um, or things that people might find potentially difficult without uh, that aggression that, that is sometimes there. So, um, yeah. It was, it was very respectful, wasn't it? I like Paul's description of inhabiting the research and so on, and just even in the little uh, snippets where people are describing how they've approached the process and so on, you, you got that, that real sense, as you say, of it's, it's privileging the, the participants' voices and in a respectful way. Kerry, you wanted to come in on that? Yeah, I was just going to say that that's um, something that our participants picked up on as well. That exact um, that exact point. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. So we've talked quite a bit about um, the benefits to, to uh, those involved, both the researchers um, and the artists, but perhaps more importantly, those who have actually um, participated and able to have some of their uh, their stories, their experiences. Um, heard and presented in ways that are appropriate, that are respectful, and as you say, non-confrontational and so on. I just wondered, um, Peter, maybe do you want to say something about what we think this whole Coventry Creates project um, has taught us about the way that universities collaborate with each other and with their local communities? Because obviously we have the, the university partnership between the University of Warwick and Coventry University, which is, is underpins um, everything that we're doing around um, City of Culture. Um, and this is just one sort of specific example, but um, and particularly because you've got obviously such a strong Arts Council England background as well, it'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts on that. Well, it, I mean, it is a true partnership, but I think uh, as is everything during the pandemic, because we had to accelerate a lot of our processes, because we had to work as a team quite quickly to turn things around, it really was a pivot from let's do some research, it's well-timed, we've organised the community groups that we've been working with, we know what the reports will look like, we know all the deadlines to, there's a complete brick wall, everything has to stop. So in that kind of emergency situation, I think that the universities worked really, really well together, understood their strengths, and when we went out to open call with the artists, and we also did an open call for the researchers, we actually ended up with the same amount of researchers in Coventry University as in Warwick University. And that wasn't planned at all, but I think the whole process has been really equitable. And I think going through the work, you, you really understand how the artist admires the researcher's process as much as the researcher admires the um, artist process. In fact, some of the work, uh, like the prof and the artist, 
just became about that process. I am a woman, I am an academic, I am an artist, are we the same? So that whole level of inquiry. But what struck me the most to come out of this is how Coventry it is. So every single commission, you can tell it's made in Coventry, even though it's made by people that weren't born here, that have just come here, that are from different backgrounds. It really does talk about Coventry from the River Sherborne to the work that Je Joe Gain did, all the way through to Reem's work. You know, the video pieces are really amazing. Looking at the Ring Road, celebrating the Ring Road, you know, it is incredible. And I've really enjoyed that journey of going through the pieces. And, and it's made revealed to me more about Coventry and the character of the city and, and the whole ethos of the city as well. I think certainly from from my perspective, I mean, I think my experience is, is very much uh, echoes what you've said, Peter, um, is in talking to some of the, particularly talking to some of the artists, um, I'm really struck by how much they valued this opportunity to engage with City of Culture. And for a, a number of the artists have said this is the most that they've been able to engage with City of Culture. And so I felt really proud that we, as, as the universities in Coventry, have really connected with our local creative community in that way and with City of Culture and done a really good thing there. Um, I think more strongly than I would even have hoped for. Um, so I, I think that's, again, something incredibly positive that's, uh, that's come out of this. Um, I mean, lots of challenges in terms of having to yeah, move extremely quickly with extremely limited <laughs> budgets and, you know, all the rest of it, but uh, uh, ab absolutely worth it. Um, mm. I can't, there are no more, um, the only other questions that were left um, in there that we hadn't specifically um, looked at were whether or not, and some of you have touched on this, whether or not this whole uh, this whole process has changed the way you might approach your research or changed the way you might approach your artistic practice. I don't know if anybody has anything they want to say on that. Yeah, I just I just want to say that, you know, doing this research um, piece of research with uh, Paul being an artist from Coventry is just an example of, you know, how opening up or making these connections, which Peter uh, was talking about, um, is really useful. Um, because out there in the community, there are lots of artists who can um, bring, say, or find um, a way to translate kind of um, the research, you know, from the university and make it relevant to real life, you know, uh, whether it's people who want to share their past experience, their impression of the home that they've come to, um, so it's that like opening um, kind of um, aspect of Coventry Creates that made this possible. And I think, you know, being a researcher, I've been studying at Warwick for a few years. And, you know, um, I, I always wanted to take an opportunity to go out and support the community. I was doing this through volunteering, campaigning. But I think when we give an opportunity for students, for early career researchers, mm -hmm. for even experienced staff, there's so much potential in making change. Um, for instance, uh, our project um, is now um, supporting uh, the Destitute Fund. So we, we're fundraising to uh, support people who might suffer or find it difficult to access uh, shelter, you know, and food in Coventry. Uh, so we're aware that our we have limitations, you know, we can't do like miracles, but uh, we always think that every, um, you know, every hand can help. Um, so we're hoping like um, to reach out and, and uh, support more people um, in different ways, but also through research and art. So please like um, donate towards the cause um, because um, yeah, lots of people will benefit hopefully from, um, you know, getting into that stage where they feel, okay, I really now want, I've got like, I feel safe. I, I have enough food. I now want to go and um, take part in the community that I belong to now. 
I think something as well, just to kind of feed in from, again, talking to some of the other artists, um, I, I'm, t I'm talking to the researchers, the, the researchers thought that perhaps initially engaging with the artists might be a way of bringing their work to new audiences. And that's that's certainly true, but it's been so much more than that because of that collaborative process. And a, a, some of the researchers have talked about the way that they almost understand their own research differently now, having it reflected back to them and working with that research. Again, I, I really love the way you described it, Paul, about inhabiting that research. Um, and so they thought they thought their research would be received in one way, but then somebody has shown them that actually there's a different perspective on it, there's a different emotion that might be wrapped around it, and that's been really valuable for, for the researcher in moving forward. And so I th again, I think that's one of those lessons that we've really learned from this, you know, powerful collaboration. Kerry, did you want to say something? I was just going to say that I think that there are just a lot of opportunities for universities to work with arts organisations and especially at this time when arts organisations many of them are under threat and, and it's a really difficult time for them and even if it's you know dissemination of research findings or more of the collecting the really rich experiential data that that we've collected there's there's a real opportunity there and um, that I hope can be um more and also just watch this space for more information on our um project um because we there are many more things ongoing <laughs> yeah and i think as i think as researchers as universities we're increasingly concerned and um, to uh, to better um, our public engagement and the impact of our work um, and i think this is another way um, and, a, and a quite an exciting way in which we can do that um, i think we've really seen that um, through coventry creates so i think we're going to get cut off in, unceremoniously in about three minutes um, so does anybody on the panel have any sort of final comments that you'd like to make that haven't been covered in our discussion and in the questions that the um, audience have kindly put to you No, so I think I think we're okay. I don't think there are any questions there uh, that we haven't covered. Um, so it just um, remains for me now to thank all of our panelists very much for, for giving up their time and for explaining so beautifully this process of collaboration, how it's worked, what you've got out of it and so on. Um, and to remind the audience, please, if you haven't already, go to the website, have a look at these projects, but there are 18 projects there. So there are another 16 projects that obviously we couldn't squish into this one hour, but we'd really commend you um, to go and have a look at those um, as well. And, and thank you again. And just as a, as a University of Warwick person who was involved in, in commission all of this thank you um, to the four of you who actually were involved in creating these uh, these fantastic outputs okay so I think that's it so I think we just say goodbye <laughs> thank you bye bye, bye. stay safe thank you bye, bye.